Scheduled meeting of the Town of Berlin Development Review Board. We have before us tonight three applications. Um, before we start with the, the business of the evening and introduce ourselves, uh, starting on the left here uh, Tom Badowski, Zoning Administrator. John Frigert, member of the board. Uh, Bob Warnick, I'm chair of the board. Carla Nuisel, vice chair of the board. Shane Misspell, member of the board. And we're missing one other member. We apparently had an important hockey game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Christy, don't forget Christy. And oh, I spy apologies. And Christy, okay. introduce Christy, yourself. <laughs> Christy Fuller, the recording secretary. Thank you. Um, you know, after about 65, you can't turn your head around. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, so, uh, <clears throat> our first application tonight is um, F.L. Brusso Stone Products, Inc. And uh, uh, those of you that are interested in this application, including the applicant, I'm going to swear you in. In fact, I'll, I'll swear everybody in tonight tends to give testimony on any one of the three. Um, uh, please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, the matters before the board tonight under penalties of perjury. I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, I am Peter Brusso from F.L. Brusso Stone Products. Um, as you probably know, uh, back a while ago, the state of Vermont has decided to take out some ledge off exit 63 um, northbound uh, coming off into Barrie. I was at the last meeting to just listen to what they were proposing, how much they were taking out. We have been approached by probably three or four contractors who are looking to do the job uh, and were interested in whether we were interested in taking the material from 63, 500 feet down the road, right into our facility, which is the quarry. Uh, same material would be stored on, on site. This is a one-off situation. We're not asking for blanket permission to continue to take material in from everywhere. Uh, we have never done it before. Um, but given the situation and location, it just seemed to make sense to bring it right in and bring the same material. Uh, we would stockpile it on site down in the quarry and crush it as we needed it. Um, so that's that's pretty much where we're at right now um, just waiting to find out they have estimated again state estimating somewhere about 43,000 yards roughly uh, so we put in for 40 to 50 because we never know what they're gonna or what it's actually gonna end up coming out they have estimated it would take approximately six weeks again probably six to eight weeks depending on how fast Although moving the material from right on that corner right into our quarry would probably expedite the process and get more vehicles back off the road and get the thing open quicker. Um, so that's what we were asking for, permission to bring in that material and store it. Just like we do our regular material, crushed, you know, would be blasted, um, shot rock, it would be large chunks. Uh, and just to store it on our facility um, until we have the ability to crush it and sell it as our normal product. Did any of the contractors indicate to you what kind of vehicles they'd be using to move it? Nobody has yet. Um, they have, there was one company, Dubois, who has mentioned using Euclid's or larger haul trucks, um, being that the route is going to be shut down uh, northbound, getting off on 63 going to South Barry. They intended on using that portion in conjunction with the state as a haul road to keep it off the other side and out of all traffic. And from that corner, I'm going to guesstimate until you turn into Williams Road. It's probably about five to six hundred feet, and then that is state land right there as you come in, two thirds of the way in, to our gate. And then we have a portion from the state line, which is approximately 250 feet of town road, uh, way back into Williams Road until they turn up under our, our right of way and come in. And one of the question is, is Williams Road town road? Yeah. Well, there's, th is. there is, but there was some question whether it was given up years ago, but it is town road, but we are required to uh, do all maintenance. And we, we have for the last, since 96, done all the maintenance on the road. 
all the watering, all the upkeep, all the plowing, and everything to it. And I've confirmed that with the town. It's class board. four, or class three. There's a piece of it. It's class three, and then it turns to class four. Yeah. Right so where that. I'm sorry. The first 50 feet or so is class three. It's, it's that's more actually than that. that's actually state right away that comes into where that. There's that big turnaround area in there. You can drive by, see a lot of cars parked. You have a drawing here or a yeah. map. For Let's see if I have a small one here. I'll pass this one here. Yeah, there's a kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one here. Yeah, yeah. that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, back where, where East Road, where our right of way goes in, off where East Road is, that portion from the intersection back approximately two thirds of the way um, is state right away where the fence is, and then then Williams Road would be that last um, to the gate right there where it turns to a class four where it goes into was Nippling's land, now it's uh, Andrea Letty's land. Uh, one of those any class three or class. I believe a piece of it is class three, but it quickly turns to class four. Okay, uh, and you've warned this as a conditional use. I did. And that is why? Uh, this is over, uh, under the old regulations, over um, my purview of 1,500 cubic yards, and the, um, it, the, 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 Current regulations has some guidance on what the DRB can can do when it's over 1,500 yards. The proposed regulations is really silent on that, um, so I took the worst case scenario under under the new regulations and called it a conditional use. Okay, because I, I I just saw it as <clears throat> if it's over 1,500 yards. It had to be approved by the DRB. It didn't say under, under what criteria, whether site plan approval or correct. That, and that's under the, the current regulations. The proposed regulations doesn't, doesn't speak to it at all. Speak at all. Yeah. So I, 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 that's okay. We'll review it under conditional use, but I, I'm not sure it needed to be conditional I, use. I took to <clears throat> yeah yeah. Um, and, and Mr. Bruce has, has addressed those criteria, so. Um, uh, does the board have any questions before we go through the criteria specifically? I, and I, I do want to point out that the neighbor who would, couldn't be present here, Mr. Marple, uh, has has given us some some testimony here as well. Yes, um, and he re he hasn't requested party status necessarily, but he's I'm assuming by providing his testimony, he's said, he, he said on the phone. Yeah. I, and he's yeah. a budding property owner, he is that correct? Is, yes. Okay. Where's his property? Yeah. It's on that back side, I believe. Um, I don't have a Let me see back side. Uh, uh, closer to the uh, the town line, Williamstown town line. Um, Where? He's not on this oh, map, I, I gather. I don't see him. I don't on see map. him on this map. Yeah. Is that that little sliver of land that you and I? I think it's this. This piece. that little piece because the only other yeah. <laughs> adjoining landowner on that side is all Andrea Letty, all the way around us. It says Greason. I think that's his piece. Um, what's this? Here, I could pull it up on the. On the Where's map. the? That was <clears throat> uh, upside down. David. Over here, I saw Anna Grierson, but that's not. That sliver is the only one that I know of, other than that's right next to our property or joining. The hat. So uh, I'm not quite sure. List of abutters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did, just didn't know where the property was. I, I think it's that sliver we're concerned about. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, anybody else here seeking party status in this application? Hearing none. Um, the um, condition use criteria. This is this is awkward. I apologize. We started doing this on two second set of regulations, as you know. So um, I'm trying to remember what the conditions were under the old regulations. Mm -hmm. 
Now this exit's gonna be shut down completely, right? From what I understand for the last meeting with the with the VTrans, they're gonna shut they're gonna do rolling stops from southbound onto exit six. And but anything northbound on that corner coming off um, a northbound lane is gonna be shut down for the duration. Yeah. So there'll be nobody exiting that exit except the trucks that would go to your floor. That's it. And going down here along the side of the road and then directly right into our property. So our, our current regulations say that the, the board shall consider the contours of the land before and after the fill. And, and you're not really filling per se, you're temporarily storing. Correct. Uh, and I'm gathering you're going to store within the existing quarry area. Yes. Uh, so it won't look a heck of a lot different than what you blast and crush. It'll be basically the same material, yeah. Um, the amount to be brought in, and you were specific about that, you're asking for 50000 The state's estimating forty-three, but we figured we'd go for fifty, dollars yeah, just to make sure. Um, and that, um, that'll be, that's, that's exclusively ledge? That yes. Um, is there any topsoil being brought in? There, <laughs> there is some overburden on there when they strip it in trees. Uh, no one has talked to us about that. We, we really don't want to get into that. The tree portion of it if there is some overburden and that is offered at the time if we take it we certainly would work along these lines but our intent is not to take it at this point i, I think the the concern of, of mr marple here is the overburden and if it's if there's any contamination i think he specifically we talked about a, a tow petroleum hydrocarbon tph you know if there's any spills or anything like that uh, if if you're not going to take it, I think that would go a long way to addressing his concern, just saying that you're not going to take it. I haven't heard you say that you're going to take it. No. Okay. Earned it. No one has brought it to our attention or even really offered that portion. We really don't want to start storing all this other overburdened material and stuff. We just want the ledge to bring in. And in my sense is that any, any overburden that they do have, they would probably stockpile it and reuse it for um, uh, contours or... Uh, for dressing it off afterwards. Probably, yeah. So, um, uh, so, so for, this, for the purpose of this application, we're assuming you're not exerting overburden, just ledge. Correct. That should simplify it because I would not think that the condition, the concerns that the applicant, that the um, Mr. Marble has, um, Marple? Marble, yeah. Uh, has is, um, it would only be in the overburden. He he said he was not concerned with the over, with the shot rock. He was concerned with the. Yeah. Uh, the um, so um, truck traffic, including the need for road crews and traffic control. Um, I think um, again, your understanding is there that that will be closed off. Correct. Uh, there will be traffic coming in from s northbound, uh, southbound. Yes. From my, my understanding of what the state's talking about doing, yes. It's just the northbound exit, the northbound ramp will be closed. Correct. But the southbound will probably remain open. So somebody will be coming down. They are, to, you're right, they'll come in from the corner down into our court, but they are talking about working with the state to some sort of haul road off the off the one side on the state property. <clears throat> that haul road would be literally on state property. But if it's not, the, the contractor would provide we, uh, you know, if it's a, a the private contract, you mentioned Du Bois. If they're awarded that contract, they would provide traffic control. It's not nothing under the purview that you're you're agreeing to do traffic control. Is that right. Correct? We are not right. Whoever does come to us, if they get the contract and if they offer this material to us, we want to do a contract with the contractor that does state that they are responsible for traffic control and dust control <clears throat> outside of our exact quarry. And, and, and I'm <clears throat> having written specifications like this and worked on projects, specifications like this, state, uh, you can almost guarantee that those will be conditions yeah. of the contract. Um, they'll have to provide traffic control to deal with that northbound traffic. Um, and, and obviously any repairs to the, the uh, 63 would also be the, the, the problem of the, yeah. of the contractor. So um, that's why I was asking about the town road issue. Because if there are repairs necessary to the town road, um, that's of concern to, to, to me. Um, 
and we would want to know who's going to be responsible for any repairs to the town road. Right. Um, well, that will be addressed as far as when they come in where that short portion of the town road is, they would be responsible for that through us. We would make sure that they're responsible for maintaining that portion as well as retain, uh, fixing the portion from our gate up into our court, whatever <coughs> damage is done from all the truck traffic, uh, they'll be responsible to, to fix as well. I did speak to the road foreman and he, and he said historically that these folks did all the maintenance, uh, the, the quarry did all the maintenance on, on the road and um, especially when, when frost is coming out, uh, uh, Tim left me the impression that they do a fairly decent job in maintaining the road. We've been doing it since 96, ever since we opened up. So, But I think in terms of this permit, we'd have to place the responsibility on the applicant. Yes. The applicant can delegate that responsibility to the contractor. Just as far as the as far as Williams the Road portion, yeah. the town portion yeah. of the yeah. Williams yeah. Road? Yeah. Because you're the applicant, I think we'd have to allocate that. I mean, you're welcome to delegate it, but... The, the question that, that now this brings up town roads are the purview of the select board would they need to give some sort of um, approval of these trucks over this town road yeah it, 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 the, we basically have a weight limit on town yeah. roads yeah. Uh, so the trucks would need to get um, a, uh, a, a load permit yeah something so that's something else that you well that would actually be up to whoever the contractor is to yeah. get the permission to go on town roads that wouldn't be up to us it's uh, well, it's, I'm, I'm it's, kind it's of asking the question and wondering here. Yeah, I, I would, if it was if it was me doing this, I, if I were you, I would go get that that uh, approval from the, from the town, and you know you have it, and then you can go to these contractors and say, I already have this approval. Is something else you don't have to worry about? I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be an issue, but it's a, it is a select board decision, not not this yeah. board's decision. Um, Although I think we can make it a condition of, yeah. uh, that the uh, uh, that you obtain approval from the select board um, for the use of the town road portion. Uh, again, it should not be a problem, uh, but I think it's just it, it, it's it's out of our purview to say you know yes or no on the road. I think what you do is you're going to seeking working in the town right of way permit. That, that's all it is for the duration of this project. Okay, so whoever the whoever's got the job would have to do that, or we'd have to get the permit. Since I mean, it's really not our job. It's not our. I mean, our, it's not our project. So I'm just curious how that's all going to transpire. Between. We would, the way I would approach it from a DRB point of view is that a permit will be required. Okay. Okay. And who gets it? <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted. I'm not understanding. You know, okay. But, yeah. but you know, they can't start hauling to your right. until that permit's been acquired by either yourself or the um, contractor. Okay. okay. My sense is it would be the contractor because they, I think any time they use uh, overweight trucks like that, they're they're accustomed to doing that, getting getting the permits. It's okay. Their trucks, their registrations that could be on the permits. But, but we can't grant that permit. The select board has, has to do that. Um, so that speaks to the condition before and after of the road to be used. And, and I think our responsibility is to make sure that there is something in place that deals with that. And the days of the week and hours of operation, uh, do you have any sense, has the any of the contractors speak to you about the days of the week? No one's gotten into that yet. I'm assuming at this point in time it'd be probably a Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday. I don't assume they're going to work on a Sunday. I, I don't know what the state's really working out with what they're going to allow them to do. Um, we only are open Monday through Friday, so that's my intent is nothing on Saturdays. Okay. My sense is they'll want to haul on, on, on Saturdays. They, they're on, they, they're on they, they, the contract will specify they're going yep. to have that exit only closed so long. Right. And, and if talking. everything goes smoothly, they'll do it five days a week. If it doesn't go smoothly, they'll do it seven days a week. <laughs> so. Um, but uh, that would be, be my guess. Uh, um, it's not unusual for them to work six days a week. So and the hours would be 10 hour days. So, so or, or do you want to reconsider the hours for this? Or are you saying it's Monday through Friday and that's what our permit did? 
Oh, I hate to sound stupid here, but that's what my brother said. He said, I'm going to only be there Monday to Friday. But we can we can reconsider the hours and extend it if needs be. I'd rather, if that's a possibility, to extend it. I would, I would just ask for what you think of what, 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 you, think you, what you may possibly need. Mm -hmm. because it's, I'll just do it now. Otherwise, you have to just come back. And yeah, so let's, let's, I, I let's said, call it yeah. six to six. Uh, six days a week, Monday through Saturday, yeah, they just to be, be safe. Wise, you know, that, okay. that'd be the wisest way to do it. Um, it it's, it's, you know, when you get there down to it, it's not that many truckloads uh, per day. It's about 100 a day. Um, but it'll be more than that because the, the effort will be concentrated toward the latter part of the six weeks instead of the first sure, part, yeah. part. But it's, it's you, you're talking about 100 trucks a day sounds like a lot, a lot. Uh, compared to what you're hauling now, but uh, it's a short haul. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they'll, be back, they'll, <clears throat> they'll be back around in you know another 15 minutes. Right. Um, so. Do they? They don't six, six to six. They don't do night. I mean, they don't work later than that. Uh, in the summer. Typically the not. They, oh. Typically not. You're you're basically working with ledge, mm -hmm. and you're working with ledge on on an elevation, so you're scaling it off. It's I don't. You can do night work, but they. Well, it's not really reason. night work at the, six the, in the, the summer. The, yeah. <laughs> From my brother, six o'clock, no. Nah, nothing <laughs> after six, I can guarantee you that. Okay. Um, I would suggest we, in terms of the days of the week, we say six days a week and we'd say basically uh, six to six. Um, the, um, the emphasis will be on not keeping that closed any longer than they have to keep it closed. I think they were estimating six weeks, yeah. which I think is pretty aggressive, but... Um, those are the criteria we have under the old regulations, and the new criteria are less specific to the fill and they're just general criteria. And I believe you addressed those in your application, did you not? Yes. Um, in... in <clears throat> Let me just refresh my own memory. <laughs> uh, that's 351, right? 351 to 53, yeah. Um, uh, the first criteria is uh, the uh, <clears throat> capacity of the community and facility utilities. And it really talks about schools. It, this is the public works type of thing. I spoke to... Uh, to uh, Chief Wolf, he didn't have any concerns. I, I spoke at length to to um, Tim Davis, the road foreman. Uh, that's when he mentioned that they the town really does doesn't do any um, maintenance on that road. He really uh, leaves it up to the quarry to do, and he's he's been satisfied with that. Um, so he said he was okay with it. And I spoke to a uh, fire chief Dufresne, and his only concern was was traffic. And I think. You guys may have addressed that already. Well, as, as, as the applicant points out, as the um, uh, we're all better off if all the traffic terminates right by the quarry as opposed to going elsewhere, um, anywhere else in town. <laughs> in, my fact, you know, uh, in terms of traffic impacts, although the traffic impacts would presumably be on the state highway system, so, which is really be for the state to deal with. Portion where it's the opposite portion that impacts the town roads, and, and, and there's no other uses on that town road um, other than yourself. Right. The, um, can anybody stop me if they have additional questions or want to pursue this further? Um, the um, uh, traffic, can we talk about that? Yeah. Traffic being generated will be basically 3,000 truck trips. Uh, and that's assuming the 15 yard truck. I was going to say, depending on what they use for vehicles. They, yeah. they, that's why, it's, why I asked that question earlier. If they use Euclid's. If yeah, they use Euclid's, will be more than that. Yeah. yeah. So it could be less trips, yeah. uh, larger loads, which with short trips like that, Euclid's make a lot of sense. And one of the contractors had mentioned coming in with haul trucks. So. 
Um, the, uh, but the traffic would be restricted, the traffic impacts would be restricted to the short stretch of road. Maybe other questions on traffic? No. Um, and there's other criteria into traffic, but I think that addresses pretty much all of it. Um, the um, mitigation of traffic um, impacts, that's really the requirement to, uh, uh, for traffic control. And, um, and I'm confident the state will require traffic control as a result of any permit that they issue. Um, or any contract that they issue. All traffic control issues would be restricted to state highway system. Character of the area. And obviously, character of the area is it's... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a quarry now that we have that we've opened in 96. Um, looks like the, all the setbacks are, are fine. There's no, no problem there. Um, the storage is completely on the site, out of public view. Um, no change of the use, actually, other as far as type of material. It's 100 feet away of what they're taking down as opposed to what we already have. Works for me. Okay. And natural resource protection. Do we have any sensitive natural resources that might be adversely impacted by this? They're using existing uh, haul roads. They're using existing quarried space to, to temporarily store this material. I don't, I haven't found any impacts. And it's your testimony that you're not accepting um, Topsoil or overburden? Correct. Okay. Um, energy conservation. The applicant must demonstrate the proposed development will not reduce solar access, and I think you've basically <laughs> said that. Said they all. From an energy conservation point of view, from my perspective, is short truck trips are much better than long truck trips. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, uh, um, and it's really it for the standards here that are applicable. Um, so, other comments by the applicant? We do have this figure 4.04. .04. Yeah, I want to talk to the head of the planning commission about that. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have this figure 4.04. <laughs> <laughs> what is figure 4.04? <laughs> that's, that's the one that says you must adhere to this criteria, which reiterates the same criteria yes. as earlier, but in a different order. Remember this problem we ran into last time? I wasn't here last time. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, this is huge. Yeah. That's yeah. what I... <laughs> I mentioned you. I'd like to speak to the editor of the zoning document. <laughs> <laughs> it's page uh, 14, 4-13. 4-13. Uh, it's really is, is administrative proceed. It's in administrative procedures. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I want to take a hard look at that because I think having standards in administrative procedures in a, in a, is inappropriate, especially since they're redundant with the standards we have elsewhere. And so, uh, what we discovered last time, Carla, was that um, 13, I'm on page still. There you this, go. Is, this table here, it says basically the process for reviewing, issuing a decision uh, must be the same for the original. Um, we limited it to the, um, no, that's not the sentence. That we need. Yeah, this is just a, this would just be a visual, right? Because it's saying which, which standards apply to which application. Yes. Uh, so it's not really. Oh, the, so what's yeah. the problem? They're actually it's different order and wording, so that hmm. it's not clear which one. <laughs> if, if we wanted to prepare, prepare written findings, if we went by this, it would be in a different order, and the wording would be different than if you went by this. So I think we go by that. That's that was my thought. Mm -hmm. And and I think this these were designed more to be. Considerations to to be 
um, for ease of use. So if those aren't accurate, we have to go with what's in the actual standards. They don't actually contradict each other. They just say it differently. Right. You know? um, uh, I think this is more like for, because we tried to make it user friendly. So mm -hmm. for an applicant to be able to see what applies to what criteria and that and certain things. So but I think then the disadvantage is their application will be in this order where it's we're true. reviewing it's in true. the other order. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so. have to clarify it. We'll have to fix it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fixes. It does say the development board <laughs> may issue separate. It basically says we have to find these, you know. But really, if I, if I read the ordinance correctly, I think this is what we're guided by. So uh, I'm not going to go through these additionally. Um, Call we are wrong. setting. Call, call me wrong. We are setting precedent here. That's all we need to do. I, I think so, and I, yeah. and I think uh, I, yeah, it's one of those things we may want to tweak later on. So one of the difficulties in always having covering the same area, so same territory twice in the same ordinance, is even if you have identical to begin with, later on they shift. Yeah. And so I, I, I yeah. have always. God knows it shifted many times. I've always <laughs> said it's not a good practice. Well, that. Precedent will help two other applications tonight, then. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so uh, if there are no other comments to be made with regard to this. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Summit? Not to adjourn, yeah, adjourn the hearing portion. Just to hear. Second. Motion been made and seconded. There's a discussion on that motion. Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion, please, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as you know, probably our procedure will be to uh, <coughs> issue written findings uh, after a chance to review the materials, so it won't be necessary immediately. <laughs> okay. Well, I would encourage you to probably proceed to get on the select board's agenda. Okay. Yeah. I guarantee you that'll be part of our decision. They, they meet the first and third Thursdays of the month. First and third Thursdays of the month. Yes. The agenda is not that full this Thursday. <laughs> all, all they have to do is pick a school board member. <laughs> <laughs> what do we need yeah, to do? Yeah, how come no, nobody wants to run for school board, huh? <laughs> well, it's. Well, and that's just to get the approval to I'll use I'll the town. I'll send it out. Honestly, please, I. Please send me one. Just to time, remind me to send you one. I'll send it to you. Okay, and well, how probably process need process earlier than seven. Yeah, we have to go on it. Just put the application <laughs> together. And then I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. and one okay. that's been used in the past. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next application we have, and I don't understand this one at all. <laughs> uh, so, so we will start. I understand why it's conditional use, but why don't I ask you? Yes, hello. Identify yourself. Um, my name is Emmanuel Diamant, and I recently moved to Vermont, um, and I am trying to establish uh, this parcel that I purchased from Sandy Vitt's tomb uh, when she's subdivided Bartlett Hill um, and trying to, you know, eventually hopefully make it into a single family dwelling. And the conditional use would be just uh, part of my incremental plan to eventually get the property to um, a single family dwelling. So this would just be kind of a stepping stone. I, I don't intend to it for it to be the end goal. I, I intend for it just to be a short-term um, condition until I, I get the septic system and also the well. There's already electricity on site, um, and just and just really trying to get those other two pieces. And, and my hope is that this summer would be the time to complete that, according to Craig Chase's plan for the septic, and also um, Benedini. Uh, quoted me eight thousand for the well, and I, th I think total, you know, to get everything needed for zoning for a single-family dwelling, it would probably take an, an extra twenty-eight thousand dollars at this point, and that's that's what I'm planning on doing this summer. And then I would come to, hopefully again to the zoning um, to have another application submitted, and and then update from a camp to um, the dwelling. So this is this is really just. Your your goal is to put a single family dwelling on this. Absolutely, yeah, and I really want to 
you know, use this parcel just as, I mean, this land's been practically untouched for quite some time, so I really want to make it reflect the other dwellings in the area. I, I know that's um, around me, there, there's a lot of other single family dwellings, so I don't want to have this be like the one camp, you know, for a long period of time. This would be short term. And um, I, again, I just, I, you know, I, I, I want to be very transparent and honest. Um, when I was first looking at the zoning laws last year, the camping designation and timeline was a little bit different when I was talking with Tom and it made a little bit more sense um, to have that six months out of the year to, you know, work on the property, sleep there, get the, you know, get the kitchen all done, get the, get the bathroom all finished, you know, until the property was up to snuff. So I, I, I'm trying to save money and I'm trying to do the work myself. So that's part of the reason I would like to have it a, as a camp as well as I, I want to not, I don't want to dwell there and not have it be, um, you know, under, un, under some type so of this like. this permit at this point in time is for a primitive camp. Yeah. A camp. Primitive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, it, and it, primitive or otherwise, you know, most people around here think camp's primitive. primitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there, there's a the, difference. But. Yeah. Uh, the, um, so I, I'm going to ask you, Tom, I mean, camps are permitted. Um, in this zone, it's a real residential zone. In the new regulations, in the new regulations, there are listed permitted in in, uh, in in the current regulations. There's listed places for camps. I think it's only in Highland Conservation. Uh, in the current. In the current regulations. Yeah, I think there was a, I think that was a change from last year, yeah. potentially. Yeah. So that's why I was my I actually had my application drafted for September of last year, and then. Like between you know winter and everything, I, I mean, I kind of got around to it now. And so, um, and these new regulations talk about campsites, campgrounds, primitive camp uh, camps, uh, and it's listed neither as a as a permit or a conditional use in the current RL forty, I think it is, right? Yeah, the residential district. It basically not residential. It's it's RL forty. Well, RL forty, yeah, yeah. yeah. RL forty. Um, obviously, single family dwellings are permitted uses, requiring only permission from a zoning minister. Yep. I find nothing <coughs> that says a camp requires conditional use. It's a temporary single-family dwelling. I, I, did, is camp defined elsewhere in this? They, they talk about primitive camps. Let me find it here. It's uh, uh, page 351. Let's see here. So can I? So the issue is living there while it's being built. Is Correct. That right? is that without, what any, without any we, approved we septic a, system. But we don't have a certificate of occupancy, do we? So how would we know if someone was? Because someone called me and said he was living there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Well, and, and you know, I, 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 there's nothing in here that precludes that. If, I mean, you could grant him, just, could you not grant him a single family permit? Dwelling he has right two now? Years to he has two, two years to build, to build a dwelling. Mm, that's Cor a good point. Correct, without, without living there. Nothing, what, there's a, nothing that says you can't live there. You can tent out on the property for, you know, all we care. Right. I, I, I'm just, hold on, let me find it there. Camping units. A resident may locate, this is page 3-2, I'm sorry. A uh, resident may locate not more than three camping units, campers, trailers, tra uh, trailers, RVs, cabins, lean-tos, on his or her residential property to be used for non-commercial uh, recreational purposes. Such units must not be occupied more than 90 days in any calendar year. That's what I'm putting this under. Hmm. See, I, don't, I disagree with that. It's not a camping unit. He's building a house he's going to live in. He's living in a, well, is there, do you have an RV there now? Um, no, so 
the intention would be to use Gendron um, building for the concrete. Gene Bowen has agreed to do the excavation. Um, the builders are from Derby, Vermont. Um, they're up north, and they're going to be helping me with the structure, and they're going to source the wood. And um, it, it's a, you know, the, the building plan, the site is for a 500 square foot cabin. It's, it's a really small, modest structure, and I hope to grow it and put it, you know, do an additional zoning application for a deck and a, and a mud room. And um, the one that's approved right now is for the shed. So that's the only thing that's really, you know, been approved is the shed right now. And, and it's a 10 by 14. And then the thing that I'm trying to get approved is a 14 by 40 cabin with a full foundation basement. And it's a full, full concrete basement. So didn't, didn't you just say that this summer you're putting in the spring and or the well and the septic? Well, that's the that's the overall schedule. I, I would hope for to follow Craig Chase's. Well, when would you intend to have this structure in a position where you'd actually stay in it? Um, I would hope, you know, if 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 this um, conditional use and I really wanted to, you know, follow um, I didn't know that there was a possibility of having the two years maybe like with the single family well, dwelling. The reason I'm asking the but. question is, are you going to be living there longer than 90 days before you have septic in a well? So I, I have other places that I can stay, you know, within Montpelier, within Barrie. And I, you know, again, I've moved here since last year. I've been working for the state of Vermont and, um, you know, I, this is I, I came all the way from Pennsylvania and this has been like kind of my dream is to build a home in you know in Vermont and, and we did so, discuss that so and, and, and so our conversation was he thought that he would live he could he 90 days was was livable for him yeah. on that. so the reason I, I mean the intent of that obviously is that people don't put multiple I mean I just I don't view this as the intent if you're building a home I, I agree with you Carla. I think it's I, if, you I, have I, a, if you start putting up campers and, campers and it, it, gotcha. but it, but it, but it limits yeah. th this is just three campers yeah. so one is less than well that's because then three. it becomes a campground I think or something if it's more than three but one is permitted under this criteria the only thing is that, that may be shaky is 90 days and before in 2018. You can argue my interpretation. That's, 90 90 consecutive days. Days. that's what I was going to say. Is it 90 consecutive days? It's so calendar days, 90 days in the So we essence, talked about this, and I thought could, we changed Could that. he stay at a friend's house on day 89? No, it's not consecutive. And then come it's 90 back. calendar days. Well, 90 calendar days. Any calendar year. No, it's no. So in any calendar, in calendar year. 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, days in calendar year. Any years. contained with right. that. Yeah. 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 In other words, you're not allowed to park there forever. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you can't, can't move park, it to you can't stay <laughs> a trailer park. And again, it's raised the concern of a neighbor for whatever it's worth. I, I, I'd like to, uh, I personally don't think this is necessary, but we've warned it. We're here. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Okay. I don't we'll like to learn. set that precedent, but that's all right. Uh, would it be better if I, would, I did uh, another application just for the single family and then I have the two years to build? Because, I mean, I don't want to make things harder for myself if I'm already trying to, you know, get everything up to snuff. And I don't you think know. you could live on the property without a septic system, functioning septic system. He's got water and he's got a composting facility. He, he doesn't have it yet. Well, well there's already a composting. No there's already a composting toilet on site. There's already electricity on site. Oh, it's it's really, not water. it's really a matter of, you know, I don't. There's no water there and there's no septic system, and that's going to be the twenty-eight thousand dollar investment that's scheduled for this summer. Right. Um, so that's kind of like the missing piece, and why I really thought the camp was the most appropriate designation right now, as it stands because those things are just, you know, the way um, we can calm the neighbors down then. Yeah. But what, what's, what, where in uh, does a conditional use allow for more than 90 days? It doesn't. In other words, I don't see a procedure. It doesn't. It, it, it does not. It, this primitive camp is, is a, uh, is section 3003A, page 3.2. Mm -hmm. Um, 90 days in any calendar year. So if he had desig or if his application was for a single family dwelling that he had two years to make, is the 90 days still apply? Not. 
you you can take two years to build it. You can't live on the property and not have a septic system. That's that's what it says to me. I, maybe I'm wrong here. You've got to convince me that that I guess I'm wrong mm -hmm. here. I honestly don't think our regulations speak to that. It clearly you, says you can't stay in a in a in an RV or cabin or lean to. Uh, um, more, more than 90, 90 days, days in any calendar year. After that, it, but it doesn't say what you need to do to do more than that. <laughs> well, correct. You just don't, you, you then become, in, you come into violation. Become and, in violation. We, and we're trying to avoid that. That's what this whole yeah, thing yeah, was. I understand. I, understand. Him, but, but I don't see it. where something other than this is permittable under as a conditional use. In other words, we're in conditional use criteria. I don't think you're asking for anything other than that. You're 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 at you're approving this primitive camp in this in this district, which doesn't allow camps. That's what you're doing. Doesn't allow camps. Well, it doesn't. Do any of them say camps? The current regulations do in yeah. Highland Conservation. Right, but and the only ones don't say it anyway. <clears throat> so is it just considered a? The current ones say in Highland Conservation. Oh, we don't have Highland. I mean the, I mean the new ones. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. There's nothing. I don't believe so. they talk about campgrounds so, and such. Okay. Yeah. So there's no. If it's not listed, wouldn't it simply be? It's it's if and under our regulations, if it's not listed and the applicant can come to the to the to this board and make the argument that what his use is 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 uh, of the same general character of those permitted or allowed as conditional uses in in the zoning district and will not be detrimental to other uses within the district and the adjoining land uses, this DRB may uh, grant a conditional use to that effect. I'm inclined to proceed. Okay, sorry. And administratively, I, I think I think we're we've got ourselves a, a weird one. <laughs> I did. Um, and so the real question is: Is there any harm in in granting it as a conditional use? Um, it is similar to the other uses permitted. And I think the only issue really is 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 how long will it stay this way before it becomes a primary residence? Correct. Yeah. And he makes an application and gets a permit for a primary residence. Okay. Uh, so let me ask you that question: How mm -hmm. long before you tend to have a primary residence up there? I would hope by the end of summer. That's um, part of with the uh, questions in the application. I, you know, I tried to address that. Is um, you know by the end of summer, I would hope that the septic system and the well are completed. Um, you know, again, I'm. Putting the money that I'm earning right now towards towards the twenty thousand that would be needed to get the property, you know, right where it needs to be. Um, again, electricity on site. You know, the guy from uh, Efficiency Vermont is going to do the blower door test um, next week. So again, trying to make sure it's energy efficient, things like that. So, um, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Well. Unless the board disagrees with that, I'm going to go through the condition use criteria. And, uh, and so my understanding is your, 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 your intent before next, next winter mm -hmm. to basically have a residence there. Exactly, yeah. So I would. So a limitation yeah. of. Um, uh, 90 days. 90, 90, a limitation of um, uh, six months would mm -hmm. not be a problem for you. That would not be an issue. No. So I'm confused. Is there a structure there now? So right yeah, now, can somebody do a blower test? So, so <laughs> trying to get the property, you know, and, and the structure that's, you know, up to, up to a code. I don't want anything that's on there not to be. So you mean the shed? To, We're talking about the um, shed. Not the shed. This would be for trying. It's like a modular structure that that again that this camp's trying to really get approved right now for. So it's there already. It's just a, it's just a little cabin. Yep. Okay. But he, but the structure he's 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 well, asked different than what what I know then because that's anyways that structure was never permitted but there's a shed there now that was permitted there, the shed is permitted yep 
And there's a, a second structure there now? Um, that's, what, uh, that's what I'm trying to get approved right now. Yep. So, but if that's, so an, that's, if that's, that's, if that's an issue, that. I mean, again, I can. No, no, no just, just, just be, yeah, we just need to know mm -hmm. what's yeah, the reality. The foundation is. is here now. Yep. So foundation you're, you're asking for, for uh, a permit to build this structure. This camp. As a temporary living residence until such time as you get your permit for, for a residence. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes. I think the, the 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 issue really then comes uh, the, the judgment call comes on um, the board. How long do we allow it to exist without having a permit as a primary residence? I, I think it can go into perpetuity as long as it's, he doesn't occupy it more than ninety days in any calendar year. I, I think what you're if, he does, if it doesn't. If he doesn't occupy more than 90 days, he doesn't even need DRVD DR. He does. It's a camp. It's a camp's not approved in this in this zoning district. So you guys are approving this camp that he can use for 90 days. Whenever he comes in for his single family home, it's really I don't think it's 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 okay, germane. That's to this. because that's because it's under the current regulations. It's under the new regulations, I don't think he needs this approval. I do, but you do? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not specifically permitted. Is that what you're saying? It, it's, it's this, I read it before, it's 90 days without right, but having a septic, a, 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 a permitted, uh, an active sept, septic, septic system. I see both, yeah, I see it under both regulations. 90 days, it's going to be June. It's, hmm? But, yeah. but he, it's, that's an occupation. If he, if he's staying with a friend four days out of the week and only staying up there two days, only two days have counted towards his 90 days. Yeah. Well, that's what I was getting at earlier, yeah. the consecutive <laughs> days thing. Well, well, no, it's still 90, 90 in a calendar in a, year. In a, in a year. In a year. Calendar yeah. year. Okay. Well, then, yeah, where I was going with that makes sense. So, so you're, you're saying <laughs> it's conditional use because it's permitted, but it's necessarily permitted in this district. I believe this DRB, this board has the ability to grant a conditional use for things that are are of the Jane's the same general character that was permitted and not detrimental to other uses. Page two point two. It's the exact same language in the in the current regulations as it is in the new new regulations. It's the exact same right language. So I think you have the ability to grant a conditional use of a camp, a primitive camp. Here, with these restrictions, that it's not occupied for more than 90 days in any calendar year. Hmm. Rather than study the technicalities of this, good. I think we beat it to death. Okay, let's just go. Let's okay. Just go. And uh, and and you because of this conditional use, we have to address the conditional use criteria. Uh, that's what the application is for. Yes. Is to basically have a primitive camp. Yes. In this zone. Yes. Uh, and uh, the only thing that isn't mentioned in your application is a period for what period of time. And, and you're saying it's indefinite as long as it never, ex never, never exceeds 90 days in, in a year. I, I believe he would be in compliance with the town of Berlin regulations under that. That could be okay. indefinite camp as long as. In any calendar year, it doesn't occupy it for more than 90 days. Okay. The um, capacity of the community facilities and utilities. I spoke to Chief Wolf. He didn't have a problem. I spoke to the foreman, um, uh, Tim Davis. He had no issue with that. And Chief Dufresne had no comment on it. This lot already has a curb cut permit. It does. Uh, so, uh, impact on schools, please, transportation. It was obviously anticipated for in the subdivision. Uh, I didn't read the red text here. That's his. That's, that's the yeah. yes response. Mm. Okay. Uh, anybody have any problem with the capacity of the community facilities? No, because that's no. a different issue. Yeah, really is. Um, 
Uh, municipal service impact evaluation. I don't think we need a municipal service impact evaluation. You have spoken to those two authorities. Um, the um, traffic, uh, I, I, it's not applicable. It was single family dwelling type traffic. Um, uh, traffic impact state, you know. <laughs> um, mitigation, uh, I don't believe any mitigation is required. Um, in this case, um, there will be equipment working there, but that's, that's just typical, that's typical. typical residential. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the impact on the character of the area, it's residential. Yeah, before, the, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, um, I was just going to say, yeah, that was one of the big things before I had purchased the property. Again, I before I even purchased this piece of property, I was looking at other pieces of property, and it, I found out it was 95% wetlands. So I made sure um, to get a certified um, person from the conservation, or, you know, just to, that's a certified, um, I guess, wetlands surveyor. His name's Alan Quackenbush, and then... Um, DeWolf engineers Brian Lane Harness. Uh, they did, you know, they went over to make sure that the land use and that's not going to infringe on any sort of, um, you know, like environmental restrictions within the parcel or within the property. So it's probably more appropriate in the natural resource protection section. The uh, yeah. concern, I that's think, true. in this case here is, yeah. is really speaking to. Other uses in the area, uh, would, would your, your proposed use have an adverse impact on other uses in the area? And, and, and I would find that probably it's a similar use. It's, it's ultimately intended to be residential, full-time residential, temporary residential in the short term. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the um, natural resource protection, and, and this, this site has already been approved for subdivision. It's already been subdivided. Um, it is, you point out, there are wet soils there uh, that will be addressed in your design of your, mm -hmm. your um, system. Yeah, there's no wetlands on the area. It's not designated within the, the current map um, as a wetlands restricted area. It's just something I, I really took an interest in before I purchased the property because I didn't want to get something that couldn't be used for a single family dwelling because um, that was one of my concerns, you know, when, when you're getting a deal on a piece of property that's vacant, I was wondering if there was any catch, you know, so. Good, that's good, good, good thought. <laughs> the, um, uh, the, um, uh, and you looked at the Natural Resources Atlas to see if there are any <laughs> rare and dangerous species there. And yeah, there's none of that. If, as far as the designation of the property, the closest hazard would be on Dog River Road, just the floodplain coming up the coming up towards the hill and that's the closest thing is just in previous years there's been water that's come off um, from Dog River Road that you know I'm sorry I'm not good at geography but the, what's the river right that goes through Montpelier I should know this Winooski yeah Winooski River so Winooski River sometimes would overflow but that was the closest thing as far as um, anything close to the property there's no endangered species or um, floodplain floodplain or anything like that so um, conformance with the regulations, and that's really it's your, it's your decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it, you have the ability to. Mm -hmm. And conditions of, of the right conditions. I, I um I, I see no problem in terms of the um, condition use standards. I think. Uh, uh, do you have any questions about it? So is this primitive camp thing, is this a state wastewater designation thing or something? Is this a state statute that's re-referencing here by Chase and Chase? Yes. Yep. It basically says that the, a, a composting toilet <coughs> in the state doesn't have any purview on that. No. It does they accept the technology. It does reduce the, so the septic is actually pretty generous. It's a four bedroom, two bath. I mean, again, this is like a 500 square foot cabin with a basement underneath. So, you know, you know, I'm, I don't have any kids right now, so this would be, you know, just me and my wife um, just trying to get this property for us, and, and it's pretty modest. So, 
the what 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 the um, compost can do is it says in um, I printed out the uh, guidelines. It apparently, can it can reduce the septic system up to twenty five percent. So I, I don't know how much that would impact the property, but I mean, it just yeah. it, maybe less you have to build. Yeah, you know, less if, you know. Yeah, your your intent to, to ultimately get an approved yep. on site water and waste water. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and your intent is to accomplish that sometime before this snow flies next winter. I would hope absolutely. Yep. Um, any other okay. questions or comments? Uh, there are hearing no other questions? Okay. No other comments? Be, uh, close this hearing. Motion made to close the hearing. Second. Motion is uh, seconded. Discussion? All in favor of that motion, please say <coughs> aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Manny. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. your time. <laughs> Please. You bring your entourage to oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, This is like an airplane, you know. We Take women with children first. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I almost would have liked that, but it was. I was really nervous coming in, so to like kind of see everybody else go through it. I was like, okay, a little, a little nervous. less nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be nervous. This is uh, just us. Well, if anybody's nervous, is us because we're trying to we're coping <laughs> with new regulations, which we haven't really fathomed through here yet. And, and as we're going, we're already finding yeah. glitches or apparent glitches. Uh, we haven't worked through. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Can't wait. And uh, you know, several people sitting at this table were instrumental in putting them together. So the <laughs> <laughs> careful what we tread on this. <laughs> uh, no good deed goes unpunished. That's yeah, good. really. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, we have. Uh, why don't you do us a favor and um, and explain your application? I looked at it. I think I understand it. But why don't you tell us what you're proposing to do here? Um, I'm proposing a dog daycare slash boarding or a kennel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, housing um, up to 10, including my own. So. Um, there'd be a fenced in area. Yep, a fenced in area in the back. Would you have uh, uh, structures for the dogs to stay in? Mm, just in the house. Just house, okay. Yeah. So they would not stay out in the kennel area? No, it was just to be a fenced in. Dog, dog run. Dog, dog run. run, yeah. And the actual pets would be kept inside at, yes. at night? Yep. Hmm. Well, are you keeping them overnight or is it just during the day? Both. Both. So it will be boarding and daycare. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Is there anybody who does that anymore? Just uh, Vermont Country Animal Hospital off the uh, South Royalton exit. You know, nice little know. niche business. I know a place in Cowles that does I mean, there, there used to be a place in Northfield. There used to be a place in, in Montpelier. And I feel like the place in Northfield might still be there, I think. Driving to Norwich, I see something that says kennel. Yeah, I don't think he's doing it anymore. Oh, okay. That, that's, uh, yeah, that's, I think uh, the sign's just there. Yeah, oh. I think uh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's someone in the Northeast <laughs> Kingdom, too. I forget. I but a lot of people now uh, uh, pet sit, so yeah. Yeah. that's what we do. Yeah, have that. There's your um, competition. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> Welcome. We don't, no, no. I mean, do you do horses? We don't actually do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Someone People comes have asked me oh, for horses, okay. too. Or cats, or. Yeah. So the only thing you're proposing to construct here really is the, the fenced in area of the run. Yep. It's the use, right? It, it, the use. Use. Two additional parking spaces. Uh, she uh, got a letter of intent from VTrans that uh, they're going to require to widen the um, driveway driveway really oh, yeah. mm -hmm. wow they didn't want they, they didn't want to a car coming out and a car turning in on route to, 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 to yeah. hold up traffic on route two so they wanted enough so one could get in and one get out okay. so is this on route two or route 12 route 12 
the 12th. Um, the, um, okay, well, let's, uh, uh, I guess, what we're going to, so basically there's going to be parking for, for a couple of people to come and stop and yep. two, two additional parking, two additional parking spaces, spaces uh, widening of the entrance. And the fence run, which you said is what dimension? No, 30 by 40. 30 by 40. Mm -hmm. And that fence run will be behind the house. Yep. The existing house. And, uh, and you also mentioned screening that you're going to build some. Put some uh, shrubs, bushes, things like that, just to kind of be okay. a buffer. On the north side? On the north side, yeah. I mean, on the south side. Well, north. the south side faces the river. I mean, yeah. there's nothing really over there. She has a drawing here. If you want to open up for that? There's the Rogers Farm is on the other side of the river, but I, I think you were talking on either end of this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. More so on this side. I think that's the north side, just because we have neighbors right yep. here and there. Yeah, that's the north side. Yeah, yeah the south side faces the river. Yeah. But that's I still visible. could. It's also very visible from the road, the route uh, 12. So it just, Would know. that be a reason to put some I, sort of? It's, it's a kennel. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, where were you thinking about putting the screen? Just on the? Just on the north side. The but side. I could do both. I yeah. mean, my husband loves to do that uh, stuff. Yeah. And kennel is mentioned as a conditional use. Correct. Specifically identified as conditional use. In the, in the appending. In the pending. Correct. Yeah, which that will be effectively not a very good one. Approved. I'm assuming by now they've already been approved. Oh, oh well, you never know. Um, the. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a, a, um, a conditional use. So going through the conditional use criteria, which you addressed the old criteria, but they're not that dissimilar. No. Nope. Um, so let me ask you, we've got your written testimony on that. Um, let me go through the new criteria. They, they are they're very similar in nature. There's a few different order and stuff like that. So. Um, Capacity of the community facility and utilities and impacts on police, fire, schools. I, uh, Chief Wolf I said there was no issue. You got the V-Trans letter of intent, so yep. they didn't have an issue. Uh, Chief Dufresne commented that uh, about traffic, and I told him that he, he wasn't privy to the V-Trans letter of intent. I, I explained to him how they were going to have to be required to uh, widen their, their driveway uh, entrance. And he thought that would suffice. Dufresne was concerned about traffic? Yes, yeah. Hmm. He's fired you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Accidents, I suppose. Accidents, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I suppose. Yeah. Um, people do move right along there. They do. Yeah. <laughs> the um, uh, traffic. We're not talking appreciable number. You're talking about uh, a maximum of ten dogs. Yep. By the way, I want before I lose this observation, I noticed that permitted are horse, but dogs aren't permitted. They make noise. Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> That's well, I, I was going to ask the planning commission why were horses okay and dogs weren't. Dogs make noise. Because Carla was on the bar. Trust me, we had some people that did not want us to allow dog kennels. Oh, really? That's <laughs> okay. ridiculous. We, um, Interesting. We did send out notices to all the neighbors. We did. Yeah. And mm -hmm. did you get any feedback? None. And we have nobody here interested in this? None. Other than a couple of children. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that are tired. Ready to go home. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, uh, so we're talking a very minimal traffic increase. Um, character of the area. The area is largely agricultural in nature. Yeah. Residential and agricultural in nature. I don't necessarily see this as a problem. They butt up against the river. Yeah. 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 Actually butts up on the river, against the river in three sides. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Two sides anyway. And the one's behind the house. Yeah. It's not even really visible. Mm -hmm. The um, 
natural resources, as you point out, this floodplain, but you're not putting this in the floodplain. Right. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't see that that's an issue applicable. The character of the area, we just covered that. Um, energy conservation. We're going to have treadmill for the dogs. <laughs> 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 Swimming lessons. Energy, 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 energy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So energy conservation, you will not reduce solar access to anyone. So the use of energy efficiency mode of transportation, I can read that in there. Okay. Walking, biking, transit. You do point out that uh, the d delivery and pickup of the animals probably won't involve pedestrians and it probably won't involve bicycles. Right. That would be a fun point. That would be Well, there is, there is, there is some, some bicycle traffic on Route 12, yep. despite the fact you've got no shoulder. No, but with a dog, that's yeah. difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I don't think so. Yeah, I haven't seen them, anybody. Biking, bicycling with a dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess, so I guess they don't need a bike pack. Huh? Not there, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, so just looking for overlap between the two sets of criteria. Um, I don't see any additional, uh, except for the landscaping. That's not mentioned, is that mentioned in ours? New ones? No one's I didn't say anything. No, it isn't about any about landscape. Interesting. Other than the character of the area, I guess. It, it is on that. On that figure that, yeah. four. That, see that that figure four <clears throat> is applicable to both site plan and some are, some aren't. You have to they're it's, checked. Yes, it depends on which one's correct. Which. Yeah. 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 Um yeah. but uh so let's let's the only thing I think I, I'm a little bit loose on is whatever you say is what it is. Uh you Lance, you're gonna put up shrubs where? Well, on this north what is that, east side? Yep, north, the north end of the kennel. Yeah, the yeah, anywhere run. that, you know, like it could be okay. facing neighbors. That's not north, that's south. This side? No, that's it, north. You were pointing to the south end, Tom. Which, north. the side toward me the is north. The way the photo is mm -hmm. presented. The north, side, the north is the side toward me. Mm-hmm. That's, okay, that's, that's where that's then. where that, okay, that's, and that's where you're proposing. Yeah. And you're proposing to put plant shrubs here. Yeah. Okay. There is already a tree there, a, um, a maple tree, but just on the corner, so we could mm -hmm. do a lot more. Okay. Does anybody feel any more landscaping is required than that? What kind of fencing are you going to use? Metal. Chain link? No. Wire? Chicken? Well, stronger than that. Yeah. Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that double layer chicken? <laughs> <laughs> stronger than chicken. <laughs> I know one thing. I, I, no, long story. So it'll be a <laughs> fence post and yep. line yep. and the. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. And then a gate that counts already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Rosemary, what the results are. I have we have a, an application. I have a question that isn't isn't really talked about in here. Are you actually creating a business to yes. run out of here? Yes. Okay. So does that require you to maintain like the criteria on the dogs themselves, their shots, rabies, vaccines, all these different things that you're going to? It can. There? Yeah. Right. So you would. I would need you insurance. You wouldn't necessarily and stuff. know whether they were up to date or not, or registered, or any of that? I would know. Usually yeah, because you know ahead that. of time. You know, they provide it when they drop the dog off. I work at a doggy daycare as well, oh, okay. so that's kind of what I'm basing things off of. Okay. So you'd have the same criteria at your place? Yeah. Yeah, all the ones I've gone to, you have to provide evidence of certain vaccines and et cetera before they Makes sense. take yeah. Yeah. up the dog. Yeah, that's just to kennel, sure. kennel yeah. cough and all yeah. that stuff. I, know, I was just asking if okay. she was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. He's looking for a place to drop his balls off. <laughs> <laughs> They're too expensive. I have two of them. It's too much per day. <laughs> Not on Route 12. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 bucks a day adds up. All right. So, are we moving on to hours? Yes. Because one thing, you might want to, the hours, if you're actually going to take dogs overnight, that's 24 hours. Oh, yeah. So, you might want to change your hours to. Well, I wouldn't be accepting people. 
past 8 p.m. No, but the dogs will be there. Right. So the business is really going to operate 24-7. Yeah. So that's what I would just change that. Okay. And then that, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. I would see the way. And I guess, I guess the, I'm not sure, we would actually keep the dogs inside at night? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Because uh, you probably won't keep 10 all night. No. no. <laughs> but, yeah. Or all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? No. Okay. I have nothing else. Right. I'll so I'll move to close this hearing as well. Second. Motion been made and seconded to close the hearing. Um, discussion on that motion? All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Well, we would explain the best just the process. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, uh, this is recorded uh, actually two ways on mm -hmm. Orca. You can Watch us yourself at home later on if you want. <laughs> or the boys. <laughs> or the boys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, um, um, I try not to. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget the camera's there. It's really embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, but uh, it normally that'll normally take the better part of two months, a month and a half. So, okay. Uh, because minutes have to be approved. That won't, they won't be approved till the next meeting uh, gotcha. at best, and then, then the, the actual findings have to be drafted and, and reviewed and so forth. So that takes some time. But we will issue written findings. Those written findings will be our decision. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so from, our, from your perspective, it's only a matter of time because nobody here has really said anything negative about your project. So, okay. Is that in the mail that it's sent, or? Yeah, it'll be sent to mail, but okay. actually. I'll do that electronically to you, and then I'll send you um, a little yellow poster that you put up when you're going to start this this okay. stuff. Okay. So the, um, and the, from here on in, if you have any questions, just, just go back to Tom. He'll tell you <coughs> how, how we're progressing, if okay. there's some issues here. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I just want to wait. It will take a little bit of time. Okay. Okay. Well, part sort of part time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I wasn't sure how long it would take. I wasn't sure if it was like immediately or if it's a process. No, it doesn't happen tonight. It, yeah, it's that's what I was like. <laughs> it'll be findings. There may be some conditions in the findings. Yeah. Uh, it'll probably mention the, the landscaping that you want, the hours of the day. Those will be a part of the application. Therefore, they'll be part of the permit. Okay. Yeah. Which is why. Carla pointed out 24 7 on the, uh, mm -hmm. on the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming Thank out, guys. Yeah. Hope you had fun. <laughs> Mom did good, didn't Mom she? Might be out.